Director of OBC, Joy Frost. This is my, I, I've been to a lot of conferences in 20 years at OVC, and this is my favorite conference. I call it the beautiful conference. It's, it's, yeah. It's beautiful because of the art and the music and the dancing and the traditional clothing and these inc you incredibly beautiful people who have turned your pain into a passion for helping others. And I guess most of all, there is a spiritual aspect to this conference that comes from Native culture, from the, the very essence of, of who you are. And non-Natives like me cannot help but be incredibly touched um, by what you are doing and how, how that spirit just pervades this, this conference. So thank you very much. And I also, of, of course, we have to, I, I think we owe TLPI, Jerry, Sarah, Kelly, all the staff, all the volunteers, a round of applause for doing an incredible job. I think over 1,200 people registered um, for this conference and to have an overflow room. Um, it, it's, it's a wonderful kind of issue, a logistical issue to, to have to deal with. Um, <clears throat> so I want to start by saying that OVC, of course, is pleased to support this 15th Indian Nation Conference, which is, as you know, is held every two years. And um, in this room is an amazing array of people. We are joined by many groups of individuals from across the country, including tribal leaders, victim service providers, victims and survivors, advocates, prosecutors, judicial and law enforcement personnel, medical, social services, mental health providers, allied professionals, that's, that's, that's a catch category for everybody that I haven't, haven't named in federal and state agency um, leaders and staff. In this conference, because of the mix of people and the passion that each of you bring to this conference, is a special opportunity to bring together members of the community who are committed to helping restore the well-being of American Indian Alaska Native crime victims, their families, and their communities, or I should say, your communities. We have some, several wonderful speakers coming up in the next few days in workshops focusing on a range of victim issues. Just looking through the conference agenda, I was amazed at the the quality and quantity of expert training opportunities. And, <clears throat> but as we know, there's a reason for gathering here. We know that tribal victims have many needs and face many barriers to service. But we at the Office for Victims of Crime and the Department of Justice are committed to supporting and working with tribal communities to ensure that victim services in Indian country is not just a footnote to the history of victim assistance in this country. And we know that we, 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 we have to make this front and center. Even though the challenges in rural remote reservations in Alaska are especially daunting. As some of you uh, probably know, Congress has greatly increased Victims of Crime Act funding, which OBC administers, um, for the past two years. Beyond the increased funding to the states, OVC is committed um, to using its additional resources and the direction from our strategic planning initiative, Vision 21. Yes, we do strategic planning too at OVC, I said in the, the, the CTAS orientation yesterday when we were talking about strategic planning and it just reminded me how important that is. And all of us together are working to develop new ways 
to help victims. With this increased FOCA funding, we were able to strengthen the support we provide through the department's coordinated tribal victim assistance solicitation, CTAS, to help tribes develop, establish, operate, enhance multidisciplinary trauma-informed services for tribal victims of crime. Through CTAS, we also provide funding to tribes to improve the investigation, prosecution, and management of child abuse issues. And there's some special initiatives that we, we have focused on as well. Uh, last year, we funded the Vision 21 Tribal Victim Services Resource Mapping Project, which addresses a critical barrier for tribal crime victims seeking services, a lack of information. Our grantee, the National Center for Victims of Crime, and its partners, partners, the National Congress of American Indians and the Tribal Law and Policy Institute have been working diligently to collect information about services available to American Indian and Alaska Native crime victims at all levels, tribal, state, local, regional, and federal. They're then going to use this data to develop a state-of-the-art mapping and referral tool which be, will be available to the public and service providers alike. It also, I think, will do something extraordinary for funding agencies. It will allow us to identify where and what gaps in services exist so that, that we can determine um, how to address that with our additional resources. Also, last year, OVC funded three demonstration sites to implement what we call tribal wellness centers. And then, of, of course, each site, just like each tribe, is unique and is focusing on different pri priorities. But overall, each, each of the tribes are working on developing and implementing victim-centered victim -centered community wellness frameworks to meet the longer-term complex needs of victims, survivors, and their families to include intervention, treatment, health, wellness, prevention, relevant educational and economic development, and cultural resources for the tribal community. And I want to emphasize that these initiatives recognize, actually, they, they elevate the role of traditional healing and culture in helping victims rec reclaim their lives. I was in a session yesterday of a uh, Victims of Crime Act listening session, and someone referenced an idea about tribal, um, tribal healing resource centers, and I think this is essentially what we're doing with our, with our tribal wellness centers. Another recent initiative called Project Beacon funded three cities to provide services and assistance to American Indian and Alaska Native victims of sex trafficking who reside in urban populations. And finally, I want to mention the Department of Justice Sane Sart initiative and uh, once again to thank Sarah Deer for her leadership role in that, that initiative. We know from DOJ research that American Indian, Alaska Native women per capita, experience more rape and sexual assault than other groups within the U.S., and that more than one in three American Indian Alaska Native women will be sexually assaulted during their lifetime. And through coordination with the FBI and several other agencies, the, uh, some of the most incredible advocates from tribal communities, the OVC's Federal Advisory Committee submitted a memo to the, to the Attorney General in early 2015 dealing, uh, 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 detailing action items to improve federal responses to sexual violence in tribal nations. Our recommendations, or some of those recommendations were ultimately approved and a memo was signed um, by Attorney General Loretta Lynch issuing directives to U.S. attorneys' offices with Indian country jurisdiction. 
and they they're, were responsible for implementing written guidelines and policies for sexual violence response, enhanced training for agents in Indian country, and prior, prioritizing evidence processing. We were so pleased to have the support of the Attorney General on the path to executing these recommendations. And we will continue to focus on the implementation of the Attorney General's memo. And of course we recognize it's also important to look forward and emphasize how we can work more effectively with tribal communities. I just mentioned that yesterday, OVC held a listening session to hear from tribal leaders and other stakeholders about what victim services resources are needed. We discussed barriers and obstacles for victims in your communities, gaps in resources, and serving identified underserved populations, although one of the, the attendees said, what do you mean identify underserved populations? If you're talking a tribal community, everyone is, is underserved. Um, <clears throat> we hope that these, these sessions and future consultations continue to guide the work at OVC to ensure that we are working in a respectful and collaborative fashion with each of you. And one of the major issues, I, I just have to say this, one of the major issues that was identified yesterday was access to crime victim compensation. And I, I will say this is not just an issue that is um, limited to tribal communities. A lot of crime victims have dif difficulty accessing crime victim comp compensation or getting re reimbursements in a timely manner and this is something that I know even though I'm leaving I know that the the leadership at OVC is going to focus on this and we already have some things in the works um, to, to really look at, at at this incredibly important issue and I'm going to speak directly about this some of you in the room may be aware that there is a possibility that Congress may authorize a tribal set aside from the Crime Victims Fund. Yeah. Please know that OVC, the Office of Justice Programs, and the Department of Justice fully support such a set aside. And if, I'm not going to say if that happens, when that happens, we will be honored to administer that and work with you to figure out the best ways to get the resources out to your, your communities. Um, this would be a dedicated funding stream that would support tribes, tribal government programs, and nonprofit, non-governmental tribal organizations located within the jurisdictional boundaries of an Indian reservation, Alaska Native village, villages. Um, and if this happens, OVC will engage in formal consultation at multiple locations and formats, as well as technical consultation with experts in order to implement programs that address the needs of tribal victims, their families and communities, to ensure that we reach the most victims possible. Here at OVC, we will continue to de dedicate ourselves to improving the lives of all crime victims through innovative programs and incorporating the lessons learned from our Vision 21 report. But again, I wanna emphasize, we also understand that you, as members of tribal communities, are the real experts, and we will continue to learn from you. I am always amazed at what you are able to achieve in your, your communities with very few resources. So I have high hopes that when you get the resources that, are, are, that you need and deserve, that we are going to turn the corner on violence and victimization in tribal communities. It's been an honor to lead the Office for Victims of Crime for almost eight years and to serve um, crime victims for almost 20 years at OVC. And it's a privilege to be here with you this morning. 
As uh, Kelly mentioned, this, this will be my last Indian Nations Conference as director of OVC, but OVC will continue to prior, prioritize opportunities like this, this conference to learn, grow, and thrive together. It's actually going to be my last official conference and speaking engagement, and I am thrilled that it is happening right here at the Indian Nations Conference. So again, I want to thank each of you, and I wish you the best for a very successful conference and training experience. So thank you very much. Thank you.